Hello everyone, hi and welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. To know more about this video intrinsic value formula, watch the video till the end and also if you are new to this channel, then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon that's given below. Welcome everyone to this channel and today we are going to study a topic which is a valuation topic. We are, st we are going to study some of the valuation principles. Well, we have the intrinsic value formula which is again as I repeated that it's a valuation formula. The intrinsic value of the business is basically the free cash flow of the equity 1, 2 and so on and so forth till n plus the last value that is a terminal value uh, which is all divided by 1 plus r that is a rate of interest VAC basically raised to the end. So the intrinsic value of the stock is the intrinsic value of the business divided by the number of the outstanding share that will give you a single value. Well, let's try and understand this in a much more detailed format. First of all, I'll make you understand what is intrinsic value formula, what exactly this is. See the intrinsic value formula is basically this formula for intrinsic value is basically represents the net present value of all the future FCFE of the company during the entire course of its existence. So it is the reflection of the actual, it is the reflection of the actual worth of the business underlying the stock that is the amount of the money that can be received if the whole business and all of its assets are sold today so let me take you to the formula mathematically the intrinsic value formula of the business can be represented as we had uh, we saw in the dialogue box okay that was the part of the business this is a part of the value of the business formula now when we talk about let me just write for you for biz refer the box that is given in the website second for the stock how are you going to value Well, the calculation of the intrinsic value of the formula of the stock is done by dividing the value of the business by the number of the outstanding shares of the company in the market. So, the value of the stock derived by this way is then compared with the market price of the stock to check if the stock is trading above, at par, or below the intrinsic value. So, the intrinsic value of the stock, IS, is equal to the intrinsic value of the business. Divide by the number of outstanding shares. Well, let me give you an explanation of this particular formula. See, the calculation of this formula can be done using the steps. I'll please go through the steps. First, to determine, you have to determine the future FCFE for all the projected years based on the available financial plan. So the projected FCFEs can be computed by taking the latest FCFE, okay, and then multiply with the growth rate. So FCFE into G, that is your growth. Step number two. Now the discount rate. What the discount rate is determined based on the current market return from the investment with a similar risk profile so this discount rate is noted by r third now you what you need to do is you need to calculate the pv of all the fcf by discounting them using the discounting rate step number four is that you add up the pv of all the fcf calculated in step three so FCFE 1, 2, 3, till n, and then you do add up all of them. The fifth step is the terminal value that is computed by multiplying the FCFE of the last projected year by the factor in the range of 10 to 20 beyond the project period drive until the business is shut down. Sixth, so sixth step will be now to arrive at the value for the entire business and add up the value for the step 4 and discounted value of the step 5 along with the cash and cash equivalents if available. Step number 7 finally the intrinsic value of the shares can be derived by dividing the value 
in the step 6 by the number of shares of the company. Well, let's study this with the help of the example to get much more detailed explanation. Let us let us take an example of the company, let's say XYZ, uh, which is currently trading at the stock market price at somewhere close to $40 per share with total number of the shares outstanding 60 million. This is per share, this is million. And here, let's say the analyst intends to predict the intrinsic value of the stock based on the available market information. So the prevailing required rate of return expected by the investor in the market, that is the R, is 5%. So on the other hand, the free cash flow of the company, the FC, F, F free cash flow of the company, uh, is expected to grow at, let's say, 8%. So the following, you know, some of the numbers that would that must be predicted and based on which the let's say FCFF or let's say the FCFE that is the from the equity let's say it comes down to $95 so FCFE is calculated using with the help of your net income plus your depreciation plus amortization less any increase in the increase or decrease in the working capital less any increase in the uh, capex minus any sort of debt repayment of the existing plus any sort of fresh debt that is raised okay so fcff let's say fcff uh, comes down to 95 so now how we are going to calculate so FCFE is 95, the growth, we'll add the growth in this, sorry, this into 1 plus, uh, let's, we'll just have to add this as number. So it will come down as 102.60. So the projected FCFE is going to be 10204 financial year. Let's say this is for financial year 20. FY20. Then let's say for 21 is uh, uh, this will be uh, 95 into uh, you will you will multiply with 8. So, you will increase it by 8% twice for 2 years, which will give you closely around 110. Okay. And then for financial year 22, let's say you add it for 3 times and you get around 119. And then for 23, again you add it for 4 years, you get 129, closely around that. So, now you will calculate the terminal value. Now, the terminal value is the factoring, that is the last, this into 1 divided by the required rate of return, that is 5%, that gives you 2580, okay. So now, the terminal value is 2580, what you simply need to do is that this are all the projected values, that is let me just copy this down here. And all these values down here. Let's keep it as 102. And uh, we have the terminal value, which is standing at. 2580. So if you see the intrinsic value okay, of all of this will be how how are we going to calculate? It's there's just that you have to divide each and every of them. Okay. Like I'll I'll give you an example. 102 divided by 5%. So you will say 1 plus 
five percent. Okay, raised to one plus this financial year twenty one divided by one plus five percent raised to two plus this value. Okay, so that you will keep continuing till the time you have covered up all the values raised to three and let's take it for the last one that's 129 okay this divide by one plus five percent raised to four okay and uh, then the last but not the least because we have added all the values we'll be adding nothing but the terminal value so we have added all the values we'll add the terminal value now that will be this 2580 divided by 1 plus 5 percent raised to 5 that comes down to closely around 2427 so that is how the value is determined now let me give you some of the relevance and the uses of the intrinsic value see the value of the investor built by the wealth by purchasing the fundamental strong stocks at a price they are very way below the fair value of the company so the idea behind the formula of the intrinsic is that in the short term the market usually delivers the irrational prices okay so but in the long run the market correction will happen such that the stock price on the average will return to the fair value so i hope you have got a fantastic idea regarding this particular topic if you have learned and enjoyed watching this video please like comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for all the latest updates thank you everyone once again for joining the session cheers